What's up, you guys? Cobrinha, Kennedy. For the first time, we're going to break down Fabricio Verdun versus Alexander Gustafsson's fight. First round submission. Check this out. The fight started from standing, and we had the plan. The game plan was waiting for Gustafsson to throw the jabs. And Gustafsson started throwing one jab. One, two, that's when we had the perfect timing. I mean, Verdu had the perfect timing grabbing the single leg. When he had the single leg, our first game plan was take him down and stay on top. That's what we tried to do it. We went for the single leg. Gustafsson did a such good job by pushing Verdun's head and also grabbing the leg on the other side here. And Verdun tried to take him down even though, but then he started pushing, pushing. Verdun had to posture up. When Verdun posture up, Gustafsson once again, he did a such good job by getting the cross face right there on Verdun's face. When he got there, Verdun, the second game plan was deep half guard. Verdun ended up in the deep half guard. When Verdun ended up in the deep half guard, Gustafsson from there, he started punching Verdun, yeah? And our first game plan over here, it was trying to sweep him and stay on top. But then Gustafsson start punching Verdun. Verdun has to push using lifting his left arm, the way I'm doing so right now here, and he came out to the back door and he grabbed around Gustafsson's hips. When, when he grabbed around Gustafsson's hips, Gustafsson start running. That's what we expect as well. And I'm going to turn this way. When he started running, so that's what we're doing. Tripped him and Gustafsson ended up on his knees. When he ended up on his knees from here, Verdun jumped it with the seat belt, putting the hook, pulling him back, trying to get the other hook also. But then Gustafsson, he did a such good job by leaning towards Verdun's left hook. And then Verdun couldn't put the left hook. So Verdun ended up locking his feet, the way I'm doing so right now here, to make sure that Gustafsson didn't escape to the side. Next one, what Verdun did really well here, which is Verdun is, that's the reason why Verdun is one of the best grappler in MMA. When he got to this position, first thing he did, he had his arm over the top and he had the Kimura trap. And I'm going to tell you one thing, when Verdun got to this position, the fight is over. Yeah, Verdun is master of the Kimura trap from the back as well. And let's see what Verdun did here. Verdun, he knew it. He could not step the left leg over, right? I mean, to put the hook. And he had to step, swing this leg for heavy weight to do what Verdun just did. Stepping this leg over the head. But when he did that, Gustafsson also did a such good job by not letting, not letting Verdun stepping the leg over. And Verdun had to turn. See, Verdun is going down. When Verdun went down, he's going to use his forehead on the floor to make sure that gives him support. But one thing, guys, you didn't see it. I'm gonna turn around and you're going to see it. When Verdun used his forehead on the mat, Verdun, he knew it. He had to use this hook as well, which is, what are you talking about? We're supposed to have this hook in, but because Gustafsson was doing such a good job, we didn't have this hook, but then Verdun, because he, he is one of the best grapplers in MMA, he realized that he could not lose this position, and Verdun immediately, he inserted the knee over there. 
to replace his foot. Look what Verdun did, because he was here, yeah? And he knew that he could not put the hook, he insert his knee right there. What a beautiful, what a beautiful movement by Verdun to not let Gustafson escape. So, Verdun in this position, he took his time, and Gustafson, he had his arm loose, and Verdun didn't try to finish from here. Verdun was waiting, waiting, waiting until Verdun used his hamstring to push Gustafson to the other side. When Verdun ended up in this position, if you watch the fight again, you see that Verdun had the Kimura trap, and Verdun took his time to step the other leg over Gustafson's body. When Verdun did that, Verdun, he crossed his feet, and Verdun showed us the high level black belt armbar. And I'm going to demonstrate to you right now what Verdun did in that fight to finish uh, Gustafson with the straight armbar. Verdun unlocked right the Kimura trap, but his left hand went to his pocket. Why did Verdun do that? Because he had this arm free. And Verdun hit Gustafson one time on the face. And the reason why Verdun did that, it was because Gustafson was so tight with the armbar, I mean, grabbing, uh, making the grips, making the lock. And Verdun had to just make sure before he grabs Gustafson's arm, Gustafson's hands has to pass the line of his knee. That's the reason why he had to hit Gustafson one time on the face, and then that's when Gustafson loosened up the grips, and Verdun went with this arm all the way through, right on the glove, right on the glove. Verdun made this arm as a bar. Look at that, what Verdun did. And Verdun grabbed the thumb, wrist, and start applying the pressure by lifting his hips up and Gustafson tapped, he tapped in the straight on bar and outstanding performance by Verdun. Congratulations Verdun. My cavallo.